Hi everyone, Bren here. Welcome to this week's garden update where I'm going to show you how I make my own mayonnaise. I'll give you an update on how the seedlings are growing. Plus, I want to show you a couple of purchases I made for the garden this week. But let's start off with checking out how different the side garden looks. A couple of weeks ago, I spoke to you about this part of our garden, which contains a lot of either dead, dying or noxious weed trees which needed to be removed so we were organizing to get an arborist to come out like that's a privet really bad for the environment and we also had this tree which got really badly damaged in the 2021 storm it was like a hurricane the garden pretty much got flattened so, i mean a few trees survived and a few shrubs but oh like here's the next day look at the state of the place there was just mounds and mounds of branches thank goodness the chickens were fine but a lot of the garden had to be redone well this tree here needed to be taken out because it was just dying and becoming a bit dangerous well here is the transformation so i took a few shots from some different angles and this is what it looks like now the arborist and his team came out on the weekend and they did a fantastic job it only took them a few hours they had some really fancy equipment I don't even know what the pieces are called but oh my goodness I'm so impressed with how hard they work we did have a little bit of collateral damage you can see those two raised beds that had a dahlia in it and something else you know got damaged but that's fine it's to be expected but this here is actually a ground up stump and I love it because I, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of this. I mean, I need to fill the hole, but this stuff is just gold. I planted in it. I put some um, a top layer of compost and I planted in this about three or four years ago when we had a tree removed. And oh, the soil just became full of life. It was really great. And the plants like um, flourished. Oh yeah. And the other thing is now, as you can see, we don't really have much privacy anymore. Um, and there's just this simple fence so I'm thinking we may possibly down the line get a new fence like a colour bond look you can see into our neighbour it really does look so bare in that spot but that's okay because you know there's a lot of opportunity there now to put in some new trees and plants whether that fence gets replaced with a colour bond type fence or left as is and I remember a couple of weeks ago I asked for some suggestions from you guys and oh they were fantastic um, some ideas were maybe putting in some Australian native trees some fruit trees um, different types of shrubs. I will go back and look at those comments when it does come to the time to plant in there and I'll share all of that process with you. Here are the seedlings that I potted up. This is only the start. I've got so much more to do. Remember, if you live in New South Wales in March, there's plenty of vegetables, cut flowers and edible flowers that you can sow now. I'll put a list of what I'm growing in the description so you can get some ideas. Here I've got some Calandula Pacific mix, which is both an edible flower and a cut flower. Have some Johnny Jump Up Violas, broccoli, silver beet, rocket, cabbage, lettuce, leeks, and some more silver beet. This one is a giant variety. The leaves can get huge. And that other one I showed you, this is the bright light silver beet. So the stems are all different colors, yellows and orange and pinks. They're absolutely beautiful and taste delicious too. But next up, here's a short video, which I will eventually put up on the short section here on YouTube. But this is a video of how I make homemade mayonnaise. Did you know that it's so easy to make your own mayonnaise? I just need an egg from the chucks, a cup of canola oil, the juice from half a lemon, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and a pinch of salt. I pop them all in here then blend. <laughs> It tastes so much better than store-bought. And of course, if you can get your hands on some free-range eggs, it can really 
elevate that condiment to a whole new level of flavor. I just realized that in the intro to this video, I forgot to mention about giving you an update on the cuff flowers that I sell here as part of my small business Brands Blooms. Well, I did mention last Friday that it was looking like we were getting to the end of the season with the flowers. The stems were getting shorter, the blooms were a lot smaller and they just weren't really very suitable for um, bouquet arrangements. Well, I was hoping I would get at least one more week out of selling the flowers at Tarmore Garden Centre, but unfortunately there just wasn't enough blooms in here and it wouldn't have been worth my while going out and purchasing some to you know, bulk out what I do have to make four um, bouquets to sell. So I decided just to leave it and I'm thinking that's probably going to be the end of selling my flowers at the garden centre for this season. However, I did manage to put together a couple of table arrangements for another regular client that I have. So I'm going to show you them now and then I'm thinking probably next week I will just do a wrap up video on how my business went for this year just some thoughts I have about it lessons I've learned okay so let me just show you those couple of bunches that I created this week Here's a purchase I made during the week to help the pollinators and insects in our garden hibernate over winter. Here's my second purchase. I saw this from the back and I assumed it was a passion fruit vine, which is something I'm thinking of buying for next year. Anyway, it drew my eye and I had to go and check out the label and see exactly what it was. It's a piper beetle leaf plant. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this plant may be familiar to some of you because it is very popular to use in Asian cuisine. And I had to buy it because I've never even heard of it before. Here's the label. If any of you want to research it in a bit more detail, you can just pause the screen now. The lady in the shop said that it can be frost tender, so I just need to be careful where I place it. However, she did say that if it does get touched by frost, what will probably happen is some of the leaves will die back, but the plant itself should be fine in our area. And what you grow it for mostly is the foliage, which you use to um, place meat inside and wrap it up. We'll see how this grows. Hopefully it will survive our winter. I'm sure it will. Our winters are pretty mild. And then it should get to around 70 centimeters. And she did say that I need to give it something to grow up because you can see here it puts out these like tendril or runners i'm not really sure what they're called so i'll need to maybe put a trellis on the back of the pot or if i put it in the ground i'll do the same kind of thing well we have come to the end of this week's garden update i know i say it every week but i really mean it thank you for sticking around until the end that really helps to support my channel and i did want to say if i seem a bit flustered in this video or I hope it didn't come across as rushed, but if it did, I apologize for that. It has just been an absolutely hectic week here. One thing after the other, you know, like our car broke down. My kids had lots of appointments. Soccer started back. I had to do stuff out in the garden. Oh yeah, it just goes on and on. You know what it's like. Life can get busy sometimes and it certainly was this week and I was really worried that I wouldn't get a video out so I was determined to put something together so this is it. It's the best I could do this week but I hope you still enjoyed it. Anyway, I hope you all have a great seven days ahead and I'll see you all again next Friday.